hey guys welcome back to the channel techbeast.org so today what we are gonna see is all about LoRaWAN okay so LoRaWAN is a widely used uh, IOT protocol nowadays in a lot of smart city and uh, wide use cases okay so you would have heard about this LoRaWAN uh, so now uh, in this video I'm gonna explain you what is LoRaWAN uh, so what are the type of uh, sensors uh, and what are the classes of sensors used in LoRaWAN and how you can set up your own uh, LoRaWAN network server okay in AWS so it's a part of crash course we have divided into a few parts and you can keep watching in order to understand uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, LoRaWAN network architecture okay so I believe this, uh, this course uh, will give you a deep understanding about uh, LoRaWAN and help you to start your uh, IoT applications uh, to build IoT applications during uh, a LoRaWAN protocol okay so okay so basically how this LoRaWAN uh, works okay so this is a part one of this video and I'm gonna explain you how uh, the entire LoRaWAN works and what are the key components which uh, builds this uh, LoRaWAN technology okay so what is LoRa okay so before we understand and we talk about uh, LoRaWAN we need to understand what is LoRa first okay so what is LoRa basically so LoRa stands for long-range communication okay so it's a low frequency modulation technique developed by Semtech of course okay the the sensor and the gateway uh, will be uh, will be the part of the system the sensor will have a modem and the gateway will have a modem so the purpose of modem is to modulation to do modulation and demodulation okay the sensor will modulate the signal and send uh, over certain frequency depends on different region okay so the LoRa have different frequency uh, for different regions okay so so if I'm in US I'll be using certain frequency if I'm in Singapore I'll be using certain frequency if I'm in India I'll be using certain frequency okay so uh, so then the the LoRa gateway which receives this modulated signal will demodulate it and send it to the network server okay so i will clearly explain uh, what are the components and how you can um, build LoRaWAN application uh, in detail uh, shortly okay so basically it's a low frequency modulation technique and the aim of the technology is to assume okay the mainly to the uh, mainly use for the long-range uh, communication uh, applications okay uh, okay uh, and uh, it is mainly to achieve long-range communication between devices together with low battery consumption this is something very important we need to note down okay the, the main uh, advantage and I can say pros of uh, using uh, LoRa technology is uh, the devices will have very very less battery consumption okay so you can uh, refer to this diagram okay so which is uh, pretty good and the sources from LoRa Academy so you can see here in X axis I have the range and in Y axis I have the bandwidth okay so a uh, longer the range and shorter the bandwidth you can see uh, the LoRa where the LoRa comes in okay so all our Wi-Fi and BLE have high bandwidth and short range the cellular and GSM the mobile network 3G 4G 5G today we are you gonna use uh, have higher bandwidth and higher range okay so of course the uh, LoRa comes is uh, comes uh, in the range uh, comes in this a uh, long range category and lower bandwidth which is something very important to note and it really uh, we need to appreciate LoRa technology for this uh, setup okay so what is LoRaWAN on top of LoRa technology LoRa Alliance has developed an open source protocol called LoRaWAN okay so LoRa is basically uh, it, it comes under the physical layer of the OSI um, model okay and then LoRa WAN uh, since we need to send data uh, from the LoRa uh, sensor to the application so there, there is a data link layer okay so that's the main difference so LoRa comes for comes under this uh, physical layer category and LoRa WAN comes under physical and uh, data link uh, layer okay so that's the key difference and the protocol mainly uh, aims to securely connect the LoRa devices to the internet okay so you can uh, deploy your LoRa network server either in um, either in public or any any cloud services or anywhere or even you can deploy your LoRa network server privately okay so then the the goal is to have battery power devices be able to communicate with the internet while optimizing uh, battery life okay so the main uh, as we said the the, the best uh, use case of using uh, LoRaWAN is, is mainly to consume uh, a very less uh, battery power okay so then uh, there are three uh, categories of LoRaWAN devices okay so basically uh, it's a class A class B class C so so in my next upcoming slides I will explain clearly uh, what is this class A uh, class B class C devices and what are the applications we can use those and what is the uh, key differentiators and how you can choose which class is good for your um, LoRaWAN application okay
so first let's take a look into uh, class a devices so class a devices are meant to have the longest battery life okay so so most of the sensors today if you buy online it, it, it comes under class a category okay so mainly to save uh, battery life and as you see the device will sleep most of the time and thus it does not listen regularly to the network okay so so, so the third point is uh, it can uh, receive a message from the network so meaning it's a down lake so in, La in LoRa sending a message from your sensor to the gateway then from gateway to the LoRa network server is called uplink okay so then the response from the network server to the gateway and from gateway to the sensor is called downlink okay so in class A devices you can initiate a downlink only after sending a uplink message okay so you cannot just like that trigger a downlink uh, to a LoRa sensor uh, so, so some let's say if you want to turn on some LED you cannot just uh, uh, send a signal to turn on an LED like making a HTTP request it does this doesn't work like that okay so you need to send the uplink in order to trigger a downlink okay so 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 that's uh, that's for the class A devices and as I said the ex some of the examples of class A devices are fire alarms flood detectors and some intrusion detectors okay okay so now uh, let's talk about class b devices so class b devices are meant to have average battery life so it's it's somewhere in between a and c okay so so the power consumption will be slightly higher than class a devices okay so here the uh, the, the 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 downlink you can send anytime so there is not really necessary uh, to, to send an uplink to trigger a downlink okay so here as you see uh, it listen to the network periodically so the network can initiate the communication and the device sends the data only when it is asked with a few seconds of latency okay so as I said it can initiate a downlink message without a uh, blink then some of the examples of class B devices are like uh, temperature monitoring humidity monitoring and whatever this kind of environmental monitoring system it's always a it's a good uh, practice uh, to use uh, class B devices okay with some uh, decent uh, latency okay so now class C devices okay so uh, this this class C devices are like uh, the, the highest power consuming devices and you need to have a dedicated power supply sometimes even and uh, it continuously listen to the network okay so except when they are sending uplinks so only those uh, certain moments when, when which the sensor sends uplink to the LNS okay so it won't listen to the network so remaining all time there will be a there will be a connection between the end node and the network server so you can trigger downlink messages anytime okay so it's it's mainly used for near real-time applications so some of the examples of class c devices are as you say traffic monitoring which which needs a real-time communication and any near real-time applications we can go with this class c devices okay so the the, the components of LoRaWAN so what components uh, uh, makes a LoRa van deployment okay to, to work together so there are four major components which we are going to see and even in my next video i'm going to show you how you can install the four major components in your own uh, in own uh, aws or uh, gcp or wherever you want you can spin up the vm and you can install your own LoRa van network server so the first uh, the basic uh, component is the gateway okay so so the gateway is the one which receive all the uh, LoRa packets from the sensor okay so second is the network server okay so this is mainly uh, to handle all the communications uh, so all your data packets will be forwarded to the network server and this network server handle the communication and send data to your application server and then uh, the application server will send data to your dashboard or wherever you want okay so then third is the application server as I said okay so the network server will send the data to the application server and uh, one more uh, important thing is the join server. Okay, so this join server is something important when uh, we onboard a OTAA based uh, LoRaWAN sensors. I will, I will, I will explain uh, what does this OTAA stands for. Okay, so there are two types of uh, uh, device onboarding process. Okay, so I will explain in my upcoming slides so you can just uh, wait and watch. Okay, so as you see this network diagram, it's it's pretty uh, good. So you can see from left to right. Okay, so left from left side you can see all the end nodes, and all the end nodes will send data to uh, the gateways. So basically, all the gateways will listen all the messages from the end nodes. Okay, so then all these messages gateway will forward the data packets to the uh, LoRa uh, network server. Okay, from Lo LoRa network server it will go to the application server. From application server you can integrate with any of your dashboards or portal. Okay, so this join server is mainly to establish authentication. Okay, whenever you onboard a device to the LoRa 
LoRa network so you need to do an initial handshake okay so this will happen over the using this join server okay so first let's uh, see something uh, more in in detail okay so the gateways so basically the gateways operates on physical layer okay so as i said uh, and once the end devices sends the modulated data packets via lora technology okay so let's say uh, we have a sensor and the sensors are sending the the sensor have a lora module inside and it modulates the signal and sends it to the uh, gateway so all the gateways around the near the area will receive this packets okay so one or several gateways with antenna will receive this packet so the gateway will demodulate the LoRa packet. The purpose of gateway is to demodulate the LoRa packet and forward the LoRa packets to the network server. So, as I said, you can deploy your network server either in internet or in LAN, okay, in local area network. Okay, so second is uh, the network server. So, the network server is basically like a router, okay, so it just decides uh, where to route the LoRa packets to which application server it needs to route okay in order to get the meaningful information from your uh, uh, payload so it handles the authentication okay then it communicates with the application server as i said so it will just direct you and route which sensor need to talk to which application server and the network server is the one which decides that and it deduplicates the number of uplinks as i said before in my um, previous slide okay so as you see one or several gateways with antenna will receive this packet okay so then uh, there will be a lot of duplications right so how uh, the LoRaWAN just take out of 10 uh, similar data similar sensor data from 10 different uh, gateways the LoRa network server will choose just only uh, one it will remove all the duplicate data okay so basically so that's why it duplicates the number of uplinks okay so then uh, it schedules the downlink messages so in case if i want to turn on uh, some fire alarm or if i want to trigger some motor or if i want to trigger some led I, on a scheduled interval so this lora one network server can help you to schedule downlink messages okay in the queue so then it handles the join request and join accept messages okay between devices and the join server okay so let's we will see more uh, in detail about this join request and join accept in my upcoming slides okay so this is mainly for the over the air activation uh, uh, supported uh, lora sensors okay so then, then uh, the third one is the application server. So application server is responsible for the application layer of the protocol. Okay, so basically uh, you need to integrate your uh, payload and the meaningful data which you decrypted uh, to some end application, right? So we need to. So that's the that's the that's the main use case of application server. Okay, so then it receives the frame from the network server and decrypts the data. Okay, so so LoRaWAN is basically uh, it's it's end to end encrypted using AES one two eight algorithm. So your data is always uh, encrypted between uh, the LoRa sensor and the LoRa network server. Even the network server cannot able to decrypt the information. Only the application server can able to decrypt the information. Okay, so then let's say if you are sending a down link to your end node like if you are turning on some motor or some leds even uh, it can encrypt the data and send the downlink to the end nodes okay so then the end nodes will decrypt and it will activate the uh, command so then all the data events okay can be integrated with destinations like as i said since it is in the application layer you can integrate with any third party uh, applications or data storage or you can put it in any database or you can use some dashboards like grafana to showcase your data okay so that's the main uh, purpose of this application server so then a uh, join server okay so mainly as i said the join server is used in the over the air activation commissioning process okay so there are two types of device uh, onboarding process one is abp and another one is otaa okay so i will explain more detail about what is abp and what is otaa and which is more secure in my next slide okay so now let's see the functionalities of the join server so the join server basically generates a security security keys for encrypting and signing the messages okay so basically your sensor will initiate it will send the join request and your LoRa network server will uh, Will, will generate a random uh, dynamic address okay just like dhcp when you connect uh, uh, ip based devices in your home router you will get a dhcp based ip address right the, the process is similar okay so you'll get a dynamic device address and a network session key and an application session key is generated okay is generated and this is mainly used to, to 
enable the secure transmission of LoRaWAN messages. Okay, so that's how this join server works. So once there is a, a join request and the join accept happens, you can able to send your sensor can able to send the data to the corresponding application server and you can decrypt and um, use it for your use cases. Okay. So as I said, there are two uh, methods, there are two processes which you can use to onboard your LoRa sensors. So one is activation by personalization and second one is the over the air activation. So as, I, as the word itself says, activation by personalization. Okay, so here the device address, network session key, app session key, all the three are hard coded inside the device. Okay, so basically this is a, one of the less secured way. So all the most of the industrial uh, LoRa sensors today use over the activation It's mainly for its security purpose okay so there is no join request so the moment you add this device in your LoRaWAN um, network server it can able to send data okay so there is no need for any join request in this case so when it comes to OTAA so the device sends the join request first okay to the network server so then the device address will be generated dynamically as I said okay so then um, your sensor will have a application key inside okay okay the, your application key so the application using that application key uh, your the network server will generate will help to the join server will generate a network session key and the app session key and it will send the corresponding network session key will be used to, to send data to the network server and the application session key will be used to send data to the application server okay so that's how this OTAA uh, works and it is of course more secured okay as the device address and network session key app session keys are not hard coded okay it's on session based so it's it's over the air activation uh, mode so this is really uh, secure okay okay so there are some key parameters we need to note down when it comes to LoRaWAN. So there are certain things which affects uh, LoRaWAN is mainly the, the, the widely used uh, LoRaWAN application is for long distance communication. So people even say LoRaWAN can go up to 10 to 15 kilometers even. Okay. So, so basically a lot of factors you need to adjust in order to achieve uh, and this LoRaWAN transmission uh, efficiently. Okay. So there are uh, some of the key parameters we need to note down when uh, developing a LoRaWAN solution. So one is the transmission power. Okay, so the transmission power. Okay, if you have the low transmission power, you will get a longer battery life, of course, and but of course, and the the range will be very short. So if you increase the transmission, okay, so the battery will drain very fast, but you can send the data over long distance. Okay, so then the second one is uh, the bandwidth and spreading factor. So which is something we really need to note down. Okay, so the bandwidth is basically the maximum uh, uh, data rate. Uh, beta rate you can you can send from uh, from the device to the network server okay so what is the maximum band uh, maximum data rate you can send so that is a bandwidth and spreading factor in LoRaWAN we have uh, we have SF7 to SF12 uh, spreading factor. So basically the spreading factors are number of chips. How many chips you are, we are going to send uh, per second. So that is that is the spreading factor here. So in our case SF7 to SF12. So uh, less the spreading factor you will you will have a higher uh, you will have a higher uh, data rate and more the spreading factor you can you can reach longer distance but obviously the data rate will be low. So the data rate is depends on the bandwidth and the spreading factor this two will have a direct impact on this data rate okay so what is data rate data rate is basically how fast the the, the bytes are transmitted okay over this LoRaWAN network a simple diagram here which is easy for you to understand how this three parameters play a major role in uh, in achieving an efficient LoRaWAN communication okay so as you see here um, longer the distance you will see the spreading factor keeps increasing so uh, more the spreading factor you can reach the longer distance but of course you can see the data rate and the bit rate it's, it's, it's very less so in order to achieve highest bit rate you need to have a higher bandwidth okay with lowest spreading factor okay then you can achieve a highest bit rate so this is something we need to note down and you need to configure uh, in your sensor or the gateway in such a way so that you can achieve the uh, achieve the maximum efficiency so, and LoRaWAN it supports um, ADR there is something called adaptive data rate so it is something the LoRaWAN will choose intelligently accordingly so you don't need to configure which data rate uh, uh, your sensor should send you can you can just set it up ADR so the law it will choose the best spreading factor and it will help you to save a lot of battery life okay so so these are all some of the key terms and key parameters we need to note down when it comes to LoRaWAN network.
okay so in my next video i will show you how to set up a, a LoRaWAN network server we are going to use aws we are going to uh, provision a ec2 instance and we will we will install the LoRa network server there and it's a public LoRaWAN network server you can you can you can see how uh, the, the entire architecture works okay so thanks for watching guys if you like my videos and channel please subscribe to it and show your support so uh, let's learn every day let's make technology easy peasy for everyone i hope everyone are staying safe and thank you